Inspecting telecom towers. With an unmanned aircraft system, it presents the ability to inspect a tall structure without actually having to send people to work at height and climb them and helps reduce overall risks. An unmanned aircraft system inspecting a cell tower can collect a lot of data in a few short flights from creating 3D models of the structure to also then being able to look at the surrounding area and these are the things we're going to look at what kind of reports we can generate hardware considerations or drones you're going to use there are many and some are a good fit for doing cell tower surveys but it's all about what the data your client actually wants and therefore it becomes about the payload that you're going to carry to achieve the client's requirement. So an example, a DJI M210 with the Z30 camera and its times 30 zoom is ideal for looking at detail while inspecting telecom towers and keeping a safe distance from the tower to avoid potential RF issues. Also the DJI Mavic 2 zoom, for example, also lends itself to these type of inspections as does the DGI Enterprise editions. So these are aircraft that are well suited. There are others. You could look at the Falcon 8, for example, where again, you've got a good camera with a good zoom. Remember, it's actually about what the client wants to achieve. Using an unmanned aircraft system will help you identify hazards for humans that may have to climb the cell tower at some point. So beehives, wasps, hornet nests can be found in towers at times. And being able to see these with the drone beforehand can then be relayed to teams that are going to have to go up and fit new equipment or change equipment or do maintenance on the tower beforehand. In some instances, there may be a bird nest. The bird in question may be endangered and disturbing its nest could negatively impact the likelihood of its survival. And if you're using a drone to do the inspection, these concerns are reduced and it will be then able to advise the maintenance team. Maybe they would need to come back after the nesting season due to a particular bird that is nesting at the cell tower. Next, it's crucial to know your airspace. So the first thing you've got to do, of course, as with any unmanned aircraft operation, is just check your airspace. Do you need permission to be where you are? And in some instances, flying above 400 feet is going to happen because some towers can be a lot taller than 400 feet. So the new YASA regulations came out in July 2020 and these will allow you to fly 15 metres above a tall structure and a maximum of 50 metres from it horizontal. However, this is a YASA rule and a UK CAA rule. In other countries, there may be different rules if you can fly next to a tall structure. It shouldn't really be an issue because manned aviation has to stay well clear of these structures and tall structures like this will be marked on an air navigation map so you're not you're not really posing a risk to manned aviation so the tower may be in controlled airspace even though you took off in uncontrolled airspace so it's important to make sure you do your airspace checks before flight operations begin and get any permissions required if in controlled airspace before flights commence Wind speed can be a huge factor for high tower surveys, especially for high flights. So if you're going to inspect a cell tower that's over 400 feet tall, just be aware of the wind because what's at ground level and what is say at a thousand feet will be completely different. Make sure your aircraft A can handle the extra wind speeds and make sure you do a double check before you take off. When inspecting a tower with supporting guide wires, 
do not rely on anti-collision sensors to see the wires and cables. Pay extra attention when flying because the aircraft won't sense such thin wires typically. So when you have to fly around these, just, just remember not to rely on your anti-collision sensors. Cell tower surveys. So the first one we're going to look at is line of sight surveys because all telecoms technologies excel, but only if they actually have true line of sight from tower to tower and the microwave dishes are connecting correctly. So here's the example. Our two telecom towers with trees between the two. And this is how they used to do the survey for line of sight. So one of the old ways was for two people, one at each tower, would then climb the towers to a predefined height where the microwave dishes are. One of them would have an ultra bright lantern. And if it can be seen by the person on the other tower, then it's clear line of sight and it's not blocked by trees. Now, we can actually do this with drones as well, so no one actually has to climb the tree. We can actually carry that lantern up to the microwave dish level, have it as a bright light. We can then have a drone on the other tower doing the same thing in front of the microwave dish and looking across, and we can do that. And that is how some surveys are done currently in the UK. Um, you can, I believe the longest is maybe 20, 25 kilometers like that. I could be wrong. So here's our two telecom towers again with trees. Another option is to take off and hover in line with the microwave dish on one tower. And then what you will we'll do is you'll take a series of images to make a panoramic photograph and typically at least nine images towards the second cell tower and then these images will then be put together processed and can you zoom in and see the tower is it a clear line of sight to the next tower this is also done for 360s above cell towers so when they want to place a second tower or a third tower and they've got an area they want to go and put it you can also do this. So you go up, you'll take a series of 360 shots above the tower, directly above it, and it gives them the best way for placing the next cell tower. Here's our two telecom towers again with trees again in the middle. It is also possible to map the entire route between two cell towers to create a 3D model of the entire area between the two towers and the two towers themselves and then you can model it all and you can then using software processing determine if the trees do actually need cutting if there is a blockage this is really good when cell towers are crossing like heavily woodland ground because you then know what area of trees you can actually go into you don't just go Oh, it's these are the east end of the wood we've got to cut or trim the top off. You can actually go, actually, it's the ones that are 800 metres into the middle of that forest or woodland. It's that group there. They're the ones we have to go and get cut to make sure the signal is improved and maintained. These kinds of things need to be done nearly every year to make sure that as trees grow, they're not going to block or cause any problems. This is quite a um, labour intensive and processing intensive way to survey between two towers. So those are the most common ways that surveys and inspections are done with drones. We're not going to go into 3D modelling and how to 3D model because there's plenty of that kind of information on the internet already. So I'm not going to go down that road um, today with this. However, once you've decided the best way to do a cell tower, 
you will have some software options out there. So Pix4D is probably the main go-to, I would say. Um, and that, that allows you to really adjust your 3D models, and that is good software. I'm hearing good things about the DGI 3D modeling software, but I've not had a chance yet to try it with Celltel. So typically, I'm going to say Pix4D is great for the heavy intensive processing if you need to have it done. You could look at Drone Deploy for creating a 3D model or ground models, but there's still some, some bits about Drone Deploy. It is quite powerful. So as with any project, make sure you understand exactly what the client requires and is looking for. So when you go and get the data, you know what they're asking for. So basic reporting, just hand over the imagery and let the telecoms company deal with the data in-house. That's normal. If the client expects the data to be provided in a specific way, understand what they're looking for. Create templates for your workflow and refine them. Make everything as smooth as you can. So if you're the one that's out flying, make sure the people in the office know exactly how to process that data. Make sure they've got a good workflow in place. And that's the end of part two of cell tower inspections and surveys. Thank you for watching. Everyone have a good one. Catch you next time.